So these are your floats. Uh, this is what turns your pump on and off and triggers your high and low level alarms. This adapter gets attached to the inside of the riser. We're gonna, it comes with two stainless steel fasteners, which is important, you want stainless steel um, to attach this to the pump. This is the beginning of the third video in this series for the septic system install. This video is going to cover plumbing um, and primarily focus on the electrical panel, control panel install, and the wiring that supports the control panel. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed the first two videos and there will be two more to come. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. That always helps me out later on down the road on the next project. Thanks for watching. I really recommend going with the, this style or some other style of pre-built um, adapter. Don't try to jury rig these things. It's just easier to spend the money and buy this stuff than it is to try to make one yourself, which I've seen a couple YouTube videos on. Um, they obviously work because I see people doing it, but this just will make your life so much easier. So we're gonna install the little rubber grommet for the electrical box which is this right here. So this electrical box is the box that allows us to run all the electrical wires into the tank itself and then there'll be a piece of conduit that comes out of this back nub where my hand's at. So hold that for a second. So I'm gonna put this grommet into the hole that Chris just drilled, which is right here. So this grommet just goes into there. Um, I'm gonna grab some sealant real quick and squirt it on there and then I'll put that back in. Uh, and then we'll show you guys putting the electrical box in. So let's go ahead and put a little sealant on here. Pop the back of that. So this is an adhesive base sealant. All right, and now we are going to install this, which basically just goes in. This little nub pushes into that grommet, and then we'll drill a hole through and put a stainless steel bolt in just to lock it all in place. And it's kind of hard to show you all that, so I'll show you. I'll bring you back once it's in, once it's in place. We have the electrical box in place now. So this is the electrical box, and we just slid it through the grommet. And my brother's going to grab the screwdriver to take out these four bolts, and then we'll put a little fastener through there to kind of hold everything in place. And you can see that conduit comes through this side, and you've got that rubber grommet on there. This thing is really, really difficult to push into place, by the way. When you install that box, it's very difficult to push into place. All right, so that is the inside of the electric box with no wires in it. Eventually, that float tree right there will have the floats on it, the wires will come up, and they'll come around, and they'll go into each one of these little holes. Boop, 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 boop. They'll come out of this, and they'll go through that hole, come into a piece of conduit, which will come out of here, and run back over to the house, where there'll be the control switch for the septic system. We are out here uh, installing the electrical and the control panel for the septic system. Uh, this is a pretty, uh, I'll call it advanced control panel. Um, it has a dose meter in it for how many gallons will go down there at a single time. Uh, there's a timer built into it. Uh, it has the high level, low level, uh, on off switches all in this one control panel. Uh, it has the cycle meter in here to tell it for that's more for troubleshooting issues how many times the pumps turned on it has the hour meter for how many hours the pump is run more more troubleshooting stuff it has internal breakers built into it um, extra fuses it has the alarm and the visual alarm the silent button if there's an alarm problem on the side uh, we've already installed this will be a, a power switch which is uh, basically just an on off switch for the main power for the unit and then the, the wire will come out of the wall and come into this box and go into that and up into the panel so We've attached a trim board to the outside of the house so that when the siders come, they have something to side up against that isn't the back of this panel, which is actually um, set off of the wall. So we've, we've got that installed, and he's going to go ahead and screw this to the wall, and then we will uh, get some conduit put into it and start running the conduit over to the tank. He attached the panel. I realize it's really high. He's on a ladder, but we haven't backfilled yet. 
So once backfill is done, it'll be at about head height or so, so it's easy to work on. So we're getting ready to start pulling some of the, the wiring for the floats and the pump. And this is 10 gauge wire. We just got it down at uh, Lowe's. Uh, we have five spools here. We're going to go ahead and give this a tug and see how it goes. Pull. Down on your dad. It's good. Good thing that's good because you're almost out of whack. We've got the fitting that goes to the side of this here. We're going to go ahead and cram all these cables through there and then we'll get it glued in place. Come around here, Grant. There's it, that's it. We ran the wires over here. We'll go do the other end and get it up into the panel. Doing the final wiring for the floats and the pump inside of the last riser. So we've got the electrical junction box here, and I have already pre-marked the wires. Um, so the pump is the is the lowest one down, and I already put those wires together because that's it's harder to get to. So I figured I would show you guys that I've got. Uh, so these right here, so these smaller wires are to the floats that are on the float tree, and then the bigger wires are the ones that run over there to the panel. So it's important to note that this electrical junction box is considered to be a wet location. Obviously it's inside of a wet tank, but it's below grade when final, when all the backfill is done, the dirt will be up to the, you know, the edge of the riser up here. So this is considered to be underground. So you need to use watertight wire nuts. And I've got two different sizes here. I've got these bigger ones that work pretty good for this. Um, you note that they were the same color, right? They're blue with a little red. They're full of this uh, anti-corrosive, anti-water prevention gel is inside of here. So you use them just like normal wire nuts. You can pick these up at Home Depot or Lowe's. You can just put the wires on there and twist this thing together and it makes that connection point uh, water resistant, um, which gets you past the uh, l &I inspection inside of this tank. I'll go ahead and put one of these together and show you what that looks like and then I'll ship you off and bring you back when I'm all done. So I finally got the last connections done. These are those watertight uh, wire nuts I was talking about. They're full of gel and it's really goopy and crappy. Anyway, I groomed everything else down in the box. I'm gonna groom, this is one of the floats. I'm gonna groom this one down in here. Put the lid back on and this will be uh, ready for inspection. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put the pump back in the tank because it was kind of in my way and I'm going to test this all before I put the lid back on to make sure that I didn't inadvertently get one of the wires uh, not quite contacting right and we'll go from there. So that's, that's pretty much it. We just groom these babies down out of the way and put the lid back on after we test it. Uh, so to, to test it, I'm just going to go turn it on Turn the pump on, so I'll test the pump connection manual, and then I'll, I'll cycle the timers to make sure the floats are tripping correctly. And I might even pull the float tree and, and cycle the floats to make sure they're all working properly also. I'll bring you back and show you that in a second. I'm gonna pull the float tree out right now. Um, when you get your septic design drawing, it will should specify the heights of the floats. Uh, the low level alarm, high level alarm, pump on, pump off, and redundant off. Depending on your system, depends on how many floats you have. In our case, 
Uh, the pump actually comes with the, with the redundant off installed onto the pump directly. So we'll have the low, or excuse me, the operating distance. So this turns on the pump, this float will turn the pump on, this float will turn the pump off, and this is the redundant off float. And those floats are these right here, which you saw earlier I wired into the junction box. Um, these little adapters, you can get these at your local plumbing supply store and they just have a little screw on the side. So your drawing will show the measurements, you take the measurements off the bottom of the tank and you attach these in the correct place to install the floats to these adapters. So the first float, which I've actually marked color coded is uh, down here wrapped around and I've got some zip ties right here which we're going to need uh, a pair of side cutters to trim down to length. These adapters have a little uh, crimp on them which you just put the float through making sure the wire is not twisted up. Float slides through that then you snap her down, making sure to engage the clips, and that's it, right? So then this will be in the tank. Water comes up, disengages, and re-engages. I'm actually going to spin this one around because I don't want the floats to interfere with each other. Could you hand me the drill real quick? That's the float tree. So this is your operating distance in here, your low level emergency shutoff, excuse me, uh, redundant off, and the low level emergency off is down attached to the pump. So we'll go ahead and put this in place and we're just gonna coil all this extra cable up over to the side nice and neatly so that if we ever had to work on this, you have enough extra cable to pull the entire float tree out of the tank and work on it. You wanna make sure you got plenty of cable and just kind of coil it up neatly off to the side. So into the tank we go. All right, let's take you guys over here and show you what the floats look like and the wiring we've got set up. So that about wraps up video three. Uh, this was primarily focused on the control panel install and a lot of the electrical. And then at the very end here, you got to see the floats getting installed onto the float tree. Um, there's going to be a couple more videos to come in this series. I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It helps me out later on down the road when I'm working on my next project. Also, go ahead and check out the next video, which should be in the end screens here. And also maybe the previous couple videos and maybe even the garage series down below. There's a subscribe button also. Go ahead and click that. Really appreciate that. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this and there should be uh, many more to come.